Hi, my name is Jaren Leaton. Um, today with Unreal Dev, I'm going to go ahead and do a continuation of my personal tutorial on planet shaders. I had someone in the community ask how you would make it actually affected by, or how would you make this portion right here, the lit portion, affected by the environment. And uh, luckily, all he wants to do is have just one light source, which is really easy to set this up. So we're going to go ahead and begin. Uh, first, by making sure that you have my planet shader built which is this bad boy right here. If you do not, you can go ahead and just on YouTube look up Planet Shader. My name is Dwonky Pinky. If you find one for that, you can go ahead and uh, just do that one. <clears throat> now, if you do have it done already, all we need to do is right click this, say Create Material Instance, and we'll call it Planet Tutorial. But if you look here, like nothing crazy. I'm going to change the color just so that we differentiate between this and the others. Oh man, autosave. Alright, we're good. Okay, so that's set up there. Now, the next step is to actually create a blueprint. So we're going to go to Blueprint, Actor. We're going to call this uh, Planet Tutorial BP. Now, <clears throat> again, the whole point of this is so that we can have something like this that's affected by the light. Alright, so that's pretty that's pretty nifty, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my old one because there's no point in redoing all this. I'm gonna just walk you through kind of what I did here. Now, the very first thing I did is in my components, and I'll do this in the new one so you can kind of see what's going on here. I don't have anything. Now in 4.7 you can actually add a, uh, well you can do it in here too it looks like. Nope. In 4.7, you can actually add a sphere on its own. You don't actually have to do, you don't actually have to go and search for a, a mesh to put in here. But uh, this was built in, I believe, 4.6. So I'm going to go ahead and just find a sphere real quick. And material sphere works. Now, this sphere that I have is a normal sphere with material applied. We're going to go ahead and apply planet tutorial. So we got that. All right, so that would show up there. And we'll name this Planet. Now I'm going to go ahead and name this one Planet too. And then I'm going to walk you through what I did here and how we're going to get this to work. So the very first thing we want to do, and I'm going to just start from the beginning here, is we want to take our, our planet, or whatever you named your static mesh, <clears throat> and we're going to pull this out here. And if you actually hold down Control, it'll just drop it as a getter. So we get this and we go to create, so we drag from the blue and we go to create dynamic material instance. And we plug that in. Now we want to first make sure this has the right material assigned. So I'm getting ahead here. So I'm going to materials and I'll make sure that element zero and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find our planet shader or planet tutorial material pile and then bam we have the right material on there all right back to what I was doing so we have this now I want to say the material that you are using <clears throat> the one that um that's actually here the instance it has to be an instance otherwise we can't do any of this so the instance that we created earlier again you would do that by going to material right clicking your base material which is this one and say create material instance so we say, okay, Planet Tutorial, that was the name of it, cool. What we want to do here is we want to go ahead and create, rather, we want to promote to variable. And what that does is it stores whatever we got here into a variable. Now I'm going to name this, um, I don't know, Planet Material, maybe, if I can stop camel casing incorrectly. All right, so that, that's pretty cool. We got that set up right now. And what that'll allow us to do is reference this later so that we can change variables inside of the actual instance itself, which is which are, rather, these things right here. So we change the color, the direction, the light color, all of that good stuff. <clears throat> all right. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to create a variable. And we're going to call this variable um, referenced light. And the variable type has to be an actor. And it needs to be editable. 
And what this is going to do, this is going to allow us to actually select the light source we want to use inside of the level. I'm going to compile that just because I like to do that. I'm going to use a git. But again, if you don't want to just use that um, menu that pops up, just hold down control and then bam. Now we're going to say, is this valid? Because if, this, if we don't have anything plugged into the, the value here, then uh, we don't want to go ahead and try to do the rest of it because it's going to break. And we're going to get errors and that's not going to be fun at all. <clears throat> so now we got that set up. Okay, cool. So what we did is we created a dynamic material instance that allows us to uh, actually modify the values on here and we stored it. And now we're checking to see if the light that we want to reference is actually referenced and valid. So now we take our planet material, assuming you named it the same thing. So whatever you stored here, take this and we say set, well, let me try to drag in here, <clears throat> set vector parameter value. All right. Uh, and I do believe I named it direction. Yeah, I did. Okay. I named it direction. Maybe I can click here. Here we go. That looks good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and explain what's going on here, but I want to move this up. Okay. So what I'm saying here, because I, I need to have a value here. And the value is going to affect that, very, or that uh, parameter that I have set up for the light direction, which is this thing right here. So right now, I mean, I can modify this and it moves around, right? Um, which is great, but it does no good if you want it to be dynamic. However, what we can say is we want to get our reference lights rotation. So we want, we're want we going to reference this bad boy, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click here, and we're going to click on the little, this is your reference light variable. We click on the eyedropper, and we're going to click the light. Dang, just like that. So now we have that reference. So what it's saying is we want to get this actor's rotation. Okay, so we get, we get the rotation, and we want to get the rotation x vector, because we want to get the actual, um, we want to have a vector from this so that we can actually turn this into a color. Now, if we were to just use this right here, the light would be on the opposite side because it's going to actually get the direction it's facing. So what we want to do is we actually want to multiply this by a negative one value, which means that it just takes the number and makes it negative. And then if you plug that directly in, bam, you are done with that. And uh, that literally is as easy as it is. Now, what I have here is I actually have a Boolean. I don't know if you see right here. I have a boolean called reset that always sets itself to false. And the reason I do that is so that I can go ahead and test out my construction script without having to uh, move it or recompile it. Now, you need to make the boolean reset also editable. So right here, editable. Now, you can go and put tooltips in if you want. Uh, I'm not really going to do that for this tutorial. But we're going to go ahead and try this out. So, got this right here and that looks good and what we're going to do, I'm going to rotate this I'm going to hit the reset and then dang just like that now if you want this to happen live so if you want this whole thing to be sitting here and constantly happening just take this portion right here so I'm going to actually delete this down here because you will not have that down there anyways if you take this portion so all the way up to the is valid and copy that and go into your event graph and then you can do an event take if you want you can do whatever it is you'd like to do if you want to control it make it a little slower you can do that but for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna do an event take and I'm gonna compile <clears throat> now that's all good and what that'll do is it'll constantly check to see if it's rotated or updated and I'm gonna make this movable it already is I'm gonna matinee this just a really really crappy quick matinee uh, we'll call it main light. Ah, <clears throat> oh, dang. Should have this selected when I do this. One more time. Main light. All right. So we're just going to do crazy shit. Or, excuse me, crazy stuff. Okay, let's put there. And then right here, we'll rotate it this way. And then right here, we'll rotate it this way and then we're gonna just duplicate alright so that's gonna get crazy so what we're gonna do <clears throat> is actually find that matinee 
play on level load, looping. <coughs> and <clears throat> I'm going to actually slow it down a little bit here, just so we can see it a little better. So we're going to simulate. <coughs> and if you look as the light changes, this all works pretty well. <coughs> uh, excuse my coughing. Now, the texture that I have here is not lined up properly, so I mean that is an issue on its own, but other than that, I think it works out pretty well. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If I didn't explain something thoroughly, also let me know, and I can go ahead and add to that. All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and have a good day.